Our first speaker today is Lauren Polinski. She's an SEO uh, consultant. I said expert. She is an expert. She's a consultant and digital marketer with nearly 15 years of experience optimizing websites. She's here today to share some essential and advanced tips to help you get your WordPress website up and running smoothly, ensuring you put your best foot forward in the digital world. Lauren's topic today is business growth with WordPress SEO, and here she is. Hi. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Michelle. Thanks so much. This is uh, this is super exciting, super fun. I am yeah. first up on your your uh, conference day one. Uh, so yeah, this is really exciting. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise with the Cadence community. We're excited to have you here. And SEO is something everybody needs to know about. And I don't care how much you know, you can always learn more from other people. So you know, no matter how much people or the audience are like, "Hey, I got this," I bet you're going to drop some knowledge on them that they've never heard before. So. I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to learning from you as well. So I'm going to take myself out. I'm going to add your screen um, and we're going to let you go ahead and talk. So we'll see you soon. If if people are listening or watching, if you have questions for Lauren, put them in the chat. We're going to do a Q&A with her after she's done with her presentation. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Awesome. Yeah. I uh, come with a very specific, unique perspective to SEO as well. Um, coming from the world of everybody should know it. Absolutely. Everybody should know it. So uh, let's let's start with that. Um, just a little bit of a hello introduction. I am Lauren Polinski. I'm I'm kind of curious uh, if anybody wants to chat in. How many people showed up to this presentation today because of the awesome description that they saw on the the, uh, the Amplify website? Um, if you did, that would be amazing to know because honestly, I wrote it all with AI and I'm pretty excited to have you here. Um, but uh, beyond that, I do have a lot of experience with SEO and I'm learning into AI, leaning into AI right now and getting all that done. Uh, but I have a diverse experience in SEO as well. So I've worked across a lot of industries. I really enjoyed it. So I have a pretty broad perspective and like to bring in, um, especially here today, uh, to bring in the commonalities of all of those things that I've learned, because it all comes down to the basic same things. And that, I think, you know, kind of what Michelle said, those are the basics. That's what you need to know. And anybody can know that. Um, so honestly, you know, there's a diverse way to take each uh, position, each unique view on something, but you can do it and make it your own. So learn no more about me on to what you're here for. What is SEO? So to be very, very specific uh, and basic, SEO is making crawlers find and index your content. Um, so crawlers come to your website, they crawl through the pages, they follow different links, uh, and then they put it away in an index. Think about it like a giant warehouse, just an AI, or, I'm sorry, just a, a bot warehouse. Uh, but that's not the end of it, right? After that, they want to put it into their search results. So SEO is the process of getting things from the crawler into the index in the right way so that when that ranking algorithm goes to the index to put something in the search results, they're doing it uh, with the content we want to show them that we want to optimize for. So that's really where the SEO person, the expert, the consultant, whatever you want to talk to is coming in. They're really helping you fill in the details of these dotted lines that make it look so easy. Um, so they're helping you start from the beginning and move on from there. So that's SEO. WordPress SEO, despite being a wonderful platform and Cadence being a fantastic theme on that platform, WordPress SEO is the optimization of the structure, the content management, and the publishing of that. So it's almost like it's the intricate way, the web of, a, of your company itself, and how you optimize that web to bring everything to the website uh, in a quick, fast way. So it deals with page speed. It deals with security and plugins, um, how many plugins you have. It deals with keyword research and placement and creating content from that that's really rich and valuable. And then it's monitoring and improving that. So it's not always just one specific thing. Um, I hope you definitely don't think of SEO as like stick the keyword here and it will win. Um, it's much more complex than that. It takes a lot of different steps. And I hope to kind of talk through a few of those examples throughout this today. So let's start with those plugins, right? SEO plugins, there's thousands of them. Um, you can pick out whatever you'd like. In my opinion, there are three types of plugins. There are the ones that do the SEO work for you. They are very common. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, they are the ones that solve the problems you need done from an SEO perspective. And then there are the plugins that give you the data so that you can keep doing better and better. Uh, so first off the bat, let's kind of visualize that. The plugins that you need for SEO. These are the most common, the most obvious. You've probably heard of them. Plugins to execute the work. What do I mean? You need things compressed. You need things served optimally. You need people to have the right access. There are different types of plugins you can do, and these are just a small sample. There are thousands. Um, and then there are the plugins to report. 
So there is Sight Kit, which is kind of new, I think came out in like 2018, 2019. There's Monster Insights, which is amazing. And if you like SEMrush, um, it does have some really great reporting. It's not exactly a plugin, but they do have plugins, kind of mixes and marries. Um, and I understand it's not as clean cut as what I'm making it look here. Some of them do a little of each, but that's basically what you're gonna get done is find the problem, fix the problem, and then report on the problem. One of the things that I care about is a slightly more advanced. And again, when it comes to which one you want, it really depends upon what you uh, need done. From my perspective, I'm more advanced. I want only the things I want to get done. And I come to look at this sort of information. It's actually kind of nice to look at it if you have the time for any plugin you add, uh, specifically because one of the things I talked about is your page speed. And every single plugin you add to your website slows down your website. Um, and to be very straightforward, my favorite plugin on this list is the slowest of the plugins. So it's really kind of interesting to see in my own perspective of, you know, this isn't my data at Rank Math, I think pulled this, this is uh, a link to it is available in, in my deck later. But um, it, it really is kind of interesting to see how those plugins start to weigh down and slow down things. So part of it being an SEO is looking through these things as developers goes and, and adds things to the website. Um, and then start, you know, saying, hey, do we really need this? Can we combine here? Can we do this? So there's some research to be done. Got to pick what you need um, and use what you need. And if you're not using it, get rid of it. Let's be real. I bet everybody here has Yoast. If you don't have Yoast, you've heard of it and you're thinking about it and it comes with a free setup and it's kind of nice. And if you remember on the previous slide, it's like in that sweet spot of being, you know, just right in size. So if I had a basic guide to setting up Yoast, if you just bought your website, put it all together and you're like, Lauren, I put Yoast on my website. What's the first thing I need to do? Here is the ultimate brief guide of how to do that. This is not everything, but if you do this, you're going to start off on the right foot. Your basics, your site basics, you go into Yoast, general settings, um, site basics. Your site basics is your website name, your website alternate names, if you have it, uh, a tagline, if you have it, the way you want to separate things. You're basically writing out right now your, your page titles. Um, these are default page titles and images in case you ever forget. Fill them in, uh, get it done, set it, and forget it. Um, if you're feeling kind of advanced, you can also go into the site representation just underneath and start plopping in each of your social media accounts. This way, you'll be able to build components later and pages later with components that automatically share, which we all know is a super important part of SEO. Um, next up are things you don't want indexed. And these are the basic things you want to set up to remove from the index. Remember at the very beginning, I talked about uh, it's getting your site to be crawled and indexed. That is the fundamental important piece. So if you're going to be crawled, why waste a crawler's time in content you don't want them in? Everything starred here is going to be some sort of duplicate content on your site, and there is no reason for it to be crawled. So you just want to come in here and check this little box and make sure it's all marked no. A lot of them are. Um, if you are looking at this and you're like, Lauren, I actually do need that, hit me up with an email. Let's talk about why you actually need that. Um, there could be a reason. There's always a reason for something. So let's talk about it and see what needs to go on. And again, you want to crawl the right stuff. These posts, pages, and categories are basically your unique content. These are the things that you will go find people and convert people with. So you have just uh, nice, unique sections here. You've again changed here. And you can come in here and use like dynamic text to figure out what you want it to say automatically. So titles and meta descriptions, you can just start and you know, default your answers to. So God forbid you forget to do one. There's at least something there. So you're never going out with a blank uh, page when you go to publish. So we've got the site set up, we've installed our plugin, we have some structure built uh, around the site and the architecture, and we know what we're gonna get crawled. So let's talk about the structure of the individual pages and posts. You've got uh, title tags and meta descriptions. You've heard me talk a lot about them. They are very important. Um, title tags from an SEO perspective in search engines are exactly keyword rich and friendly. They may not appear exactly as you want them, but by putting that keyword there, um, remember crawl and index and then the ranking algorithm pulls from the index, putting your keywords in the right place in the title tags are going to help find you quickly. It's like literally the tab, you know, kind of at the top of each folder. So we want to make sure we've got the unique title from an SEO perspective, but sometimes that doesn't match with the uh, marketing team's perspective, right? So you've got social media marketing teams that want to do like catchy headlines on, on Facebook or something like that. You've got uh, you know email communications going out and you need the landing page to look like that when people see it. So there's a lot of different ways to do it and cadence and the theme and everything really makes it easy when you install these uh, extra SEO plugins. So what you're looking at here in the bottom left corner is just the beginning of a dashboard for the post, the posts when you're looking at them. 
and you'll see the name you've written there, which I don't think you can read right now, but if you can, is what's going to be your title tag in most times. Um, and then over on the right, you'll see when you're in the post and you're editing it, there's an excerpt and that will be your meta description. If you fill those two things in, that's what the marketing teams can pretty much use to create content on your website uh, that looks and is catchy and matches that email. If you've got the same title, it does what you need it to do from your brand voice perspective. On the other side, you've got that plugin and that plugin for SEO stuff will let you usually change it not only for SEO, but for social media and different platforms and things like that. So I can come out here and build a different title for SEO, get my keyword in there, which is link building strategies, and make sure that my optimization for my description is marrying with those uh, related keywords. While I can leave marketing and other teams to decide what that brand voice is and make sure that I get that clickable sort of on-page link. Um, then you've got the purpose of that is for pages, right? So you've got all these titles and descriptions written out. You've probably got a handful of pages um, which you want to start building, right? These are the pages that you're informing. These are your product detail pages, your home pages, your category pages for your if you're an e-commerce type site. Um, these are the the ones that inform and bring your audience to a conversion point. And it doesn't have to always be sign up for my email or um, buy this thing. It can sometimes just be click into the next page or watch this video. Um, your conversion can be very vague in this sense. You just need to know what it is. But a page is going to do that. So when you're in WordPress and you want to go to pages, you want to be judicious with the amount of pages you're building because, you know, you only have so much you need to talk about. Uh, you have all your products and your index, remember? So you're going to organize this out. You're going to build this out. You're going to think about it as the core content of your site. These keywords are the ones you've spent a long time researching that you want to know exactly what you want to ring for, what is your product to be sold under, or what your business uh, name aligns to. Um, these pages should have a huge technical SEO review of them. It should be done during the beginning so that the SEO can start to see the structure of what's going on and help with the content alignment, but then near the end as well so that you have uh, all that SEO didn't get left behind, your title tags, your descriptions, your any schemas and extra stuff that an SEO would want to do that advanced stuff. Um, so you'll look at this sort of page right here and you can see it's got a bunch of headlines on it, right? So as an SEO you can come in early and start talking about, you know, this is the keyword for the page. What are the topics of the page? What are the thematic topics related to it? And start plopping them down and building um, the different components. The development team can build the different components to solve the problem. And you have to remember that part too. Um, as an SEO, your developers are building elements and blocks and templates and little widgets inside a bigger page. So if you're going to have a header component and it's got your H1 in it, you can't use another H1 on the page. So in which case, you got to make sure as your team is building out all these components and blocks that they're naming them in a way that people can understand what it is. Or you have to build and unlock that all down so only one person is building pages. So there's a lot of decisions you have to make really early on when you start your, your website. Um, if you're a team of one, it makes it a lot easier because your decisions can just be like, I'll do it later. But if you have a team of many, you're going to have to start thinking about who's going to do what. How am I going to get through all my content? So remember back in the beginning, you've done your research to at least what am I going to be talking about? What's my product size? Prioritize the way you're going to get at your content and start executing it through that sort of mention. Again, if you've got a really good SEO, the reason why you want them to see it early and late is so that they can look at this sort of stuff too on the page and insert links and body copy and make sure all the images you end up actually using have alt attributes on them. Um, and even at the very bottom, you know, like uh, we built this component, it's got quick add to cart links. So you can buy immediately from this page. I've informed somebody about what these classes are and I'm getting them to buy the product that I want them to buy. Um, it's kind of a nice little win from a page perspective. So then you've got pages and then you've got Posts. Posts are the other side of the content creating part of WordPress. If you're going to, you're going to get your pages done and you're probably going to be done for a while. There shouldn't be a lot of regular uh, quarterly, weekly updating. Posts are the ones you ongoingly update. They find new audiences. They find existing, they bring people in, they intrigue people to come back to your site. Posts can do a lot. If uh, you have an SEO building all of your posts, it's really great. They'll do a lot of great work to find and build categories and tell you exactly what things are out there thematically, you know, what kind of keywords people are looking for and, and topically organize them out for you. It's super great for content writers. And then later on, right before you publish anything, they can do that final sweep. Make sure the links are in there. Make sure the URL makes sense. Do that little SEO thing with the title tag I showed you early on. Um, those are the sort of things you want to get somebody with some SEO experience on really early and then really late. Um, but you'll want to just overall be aware that it's the stuff you read about all the time. Like Michelle said, you probably heard about SEO 
ah, probably all the stuff you've heard really applies to your posts. It applies to the fact that like, um, you've got different types of people coming to your audience and you've got to tell a story for each one of them. So you've got to create this long form content that is intriguing, that drives people over to those core pages that we were just talking about. If you're just getting them to your site, they're just going to get to your site. Your SEO is going to walk away. I bet you've had a consultant actually that said, I increased your blog traffic 400%. Well, that's nice, but did it increase my revenue anything? And if it didn't look at your post, did your SEO, if you asked your SEO to write a post, they probably just wrote, you know, target keyword this, target keyword that, target keywords, great, thanks. Um, maybe they linked to another blog. Uh, I bet what they didn't do was take your content and create a marketing message to it that gets you over to why I'm writing about it. You know, honestly, um, we'll talk about that in a second, but it's a really, really important point. Uh, second important point, really, when it comes to all of this is CSS. Um, I have been and worked on so many websites where I have to go rebuild all of the pages, whether it's WordPress or not. Um, I have to work with developers to rebuild pages because H tags are being used to style text on the page. So a heading tag, an H tag, is the information that is usually like H1, H2, H3, and they they give importance to the words that it's it's in. So if you have H1, 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 you've you know got no importance. If you've got everything in H3, you know, you've really diluted your value. Um, so you really can take CSS, any kind of styling, and make any kind of text look like something else. And that's the way to do it. I mean, I like to think about it as if you were writing an email to somebody, you wouldn't just write all caps the whole way through. Uh, you would probably, you know, use some caps in some places, maybe bold some text in other places. Do that um, when you write your content because it really is helpful and, and engaging for the audience. Um, so when you're looking at the site, like I'm talking about, there's a heading tag, there's a heading tag, and there's a heading tag. Um, this is my site, and I do look at it and go, mm, that's probably not great. I might go fix that later. Uh, but I do have my body copy here. And again, what's really important is that this H1 looks like this on this page, doesn't look like that on every other page. This H2 doesn't look like this on every page. I have components and different placements and different H3s. You can use the styles to make it fit the block it's in and then use the H tag itself to identify the value, uh, the importance of that word or phrase for your page. And again, Cadence makes this super, super lovely. Um, so the advanced text block, uh, which I'm really glad they renamed from the advanced heading block, but the advanced text block uh, is a great component. You can actually see on most of my pages, I typically use it everywhere because it comes with so many extra styles. Um, particularly down here when you're in the text itself, you can style it for any heading but you can do uh, paragraphs and div tags and spans. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. So you can really take away the weighted value of it and reduce it so that you can have lots of headings if you want them. I'm sorry, lots of styled text to look like headings if you want them uh, without actually using the H tag itself. Um, and then again, once you do use the text and you get it all in here, you can come over to the right with the style tab on the block um, and use those advanced typography settings to make it bold and um, uh, semi-bold or whatever you want it to do if you even want to change off uh, the different type of font. So a lot of stuff you can do with those text blocks, um, especially in Cadence, and I really, really am happy they renamed it. Uh, we also have global settings, and that's another key area I do recommend you set your heading tags in, and this is helpful on the posts side. Uh, so on the post side, you probably have different people maybe writing. You might be outsourcing your writing to a, a consultant who wants to create uh, long form content for you, maybe build the content and visuals that you need, um, in which case you want to set those global settings so you can kind of quickly get that content into your site without having to worry too much about structure. Again, posts are probably going to be more long format sort of pieces of content. You can put blocks and things if you really wanted to. But for the most part, it's going to be like that, uh, this long form content you see here. Um, and so if you go to customize fonts and colors typography, you can set all of those global settings right there and get your H1s to look the same way on every post and get your H2s to look the same. And it is important there. Again, remember, heading tags are about the weighted words. And when you write long form content, I want to give value to the weight in my headings. So this will help you as the content writer to flesh out and organize and lay out the outline and move into drafts and, and final production. But at the same time, it'll help you understand from a, um, a blog perspective, you get these great table of contents and it helps you understand that you're there, you've reached and, and covered the whole piece of content. Unfortunately, if you run Elementor, you have to also do this in Elementor. <laughs> You'll all go into Elementor, global fonts, system fonts, and custom fonts. 
Um, if you do use Elementor and you don't like it, please contact me and I'd be happy to talk to you about what you could do instead. Um, if you do use Elementor and you like it, congratulations, you're using a really cool tool. It's got a lot of advanced stuff and it's weighing down your site. So you do also need some help. Let's talk. Um, but in this case, Elementor has a, a really nice feature. If you think about the fact you have to do everything twice, um, global fonts allow you to do what we just saw before your heading tags, but they call them primary headlines. So instead of saying H tags, which I think is kind of a WordPress issue, they go and call primary headline and secondary headline. Uh, but then you see underneath you have custom fonts. Um, this is actually kind of nice because if you remember a couple slides, I had like yellow text and big white text. And maybe I want a, a different developers to work on my site and I want yellow text to always be the same type. I can set it in here. I can call it yellow text. Um, and then that way, if I have a group of developers or more than one person at least, um, my styles are the same and my pages will look like they were built by the same person. And it's really nice. All right, so we have set up our site, we've installed some plugins, we have uh, set up our pages and posts, we've done a ton of research to understand what I wanna do um, in terms of basic concepting. Um, now, great, Lauren, I wanna write, let's write. Well, let's talk about that, what is content? Um, what is the content I keep talking about even in the Zoom deck? Content is a very vague word. Uh, to me, uh, especially, I, I don't really like using it outside of creative groups. I don't like using it in front of uh, executive types because I think when uh, typically it's become so overused, people think content is words. Uh, content can be text, images, videos, audios, anything. Content is a way of communicating. It is a way of telling the story of a person, a place, a thing, a noun of anything in your life. Content can be in the world or in the on the internet. Content can be basically anything. And I think of it as creating a digital story. And I think if you create it as a digital story, you think about it more in the sense of I'm telling a story to somebody and you go back way early on and we break down our audience of who we see and we wanna to write to. I have a story, I'm gonna tell it differently to different people. And so my content can be done in different ways. And I'd like to talk about telling stories and how storytelling turns into high quality content. High quality content is the way you tell the story. You know, um, there's a running joke with people who know me. I tell bad stories. Um, I forget uh, a lot of key details of certain things, like the and my accuracy and, and completeness of my stories are pretty lax. And so I do a lot of research when I write. But if I audio, uh, orally tell you a story, you're probably going to laugh at me because it's it's pretty full of caps. Um, but if you can tell a high a high quality story, a story that is accurate, relevant, complete, and engaging particularly original, you can create high quality content. And I will tell you, the, the quality of your content is more important than the quantity of the content you produce. Um, and I mean that, like, I like AI, I wrote that description for this, this presentation on AI, I created this using the concept of, of things AI told me, but all of this presentation was built by me. So this is original, hopefully high quality content, because you're finding it relevant and complete and engaging, and it's come in the form of a slide share. So there's a lot of really good ways to think about content when you go to create something. Don't always think you have to write a long form blog post. Well, how do we get those ideas to write? We've talked about it before, but we'll talk about it again. The easiest one I love and everybody, for, uh, everybody, but many people I work with forget is ask, ask your customers. Um, if you run an in-person business, you can easily ask people. You can probably talk, you think about all the times people have already asked you questions. If anybody's ever asked you a question and you haven't put it on the internet as some sort of FAQ answer for your site, you're probably missing out on like a hundred other people with the same question. So answer, ask questions, listen to them and answer them. Um, analyze your website data, analyze your social media conversations, read the industry news and write things related to the industry. If you need ideas that are gonna be interesting to your audience, you don't always have to sell something. You can just write about what's going on and be relevant to that. So. Not every post, remember it's posts aren't there to convert, posts are there to intrigue and engage and bring people into your site. They don't always have to be the final thing you want them to do, buy something, sign up for something. But if you are reliable in doing that or write recurring content and you are sharing it throughout your communities, um, you're getting ideas from people, you're sharing it back with people, you're creating original content, you're going to do well online. You're going to create a great story. Um, from there though, we're here for SEO. Let's talk about that keyword data. And I think this is a really interesting way I'm going to do it with free tool, uh, Google Search Console. Um, I used a little bit of SEMrush, but it was under a free account. So all together now, I'm gonna show you how to do keyword research basically from your website and take it and run with it. Um, Google Search Console, one of uh, the best analytics tools I like. 
<laughs> um, I trust it enough as I can trust Google. Uh, Google's given me a job uh, for a long time now by being an SEO. I'd like to thank them for that. But at the same time, I have to use the data they give me. And this comes straight from Google. This isn't based on my website data. This isn't an analytics package that I have to scrub and look at. It's just what Google's given me. So sign up for it. It's easy to do. Um, definitely use it. Let's talk if you've never used it before. Uh, but what you can go in is you can look at the performance results. So you go into Google Search Console, you go to Search Results, and you can find your performance across all the different ways Google is presenting it. So you can break down the search results by web results, image results, video results, you know, the scroll bar across the top, uh, typically. You can look at time frames. You can look at devices, desktop and mobile. You can look at time by day. You can also look at search result types. So like breadcrumb results or product results or review snippets. Um, there's a lot of good data that comes in here. And in this particular one, we're looking at a particular page for the client I was working on. Um, and what they obviously do on this page is something about transmission service and maintenance. Um, so what we were doing is going through and looking at these words that show up in Google Search Console. And then I was taking them and Mary doing extra research inside SEMrush to see how we were doing on this complete topic of transmissions. Um, you can see here on the right, we're looking at some of the, the ranking positions really high. How often uh, do you change yours? Is transmission service cost? These are key target words we went after and they're ranking very highly for them. Um, then again, you've got your head terms that everybody's out there searching for and we could be doing a quite a bit better. But what this vision isn't, that this view isn't showing you right here are those other search result types, the image results or um, the, the search appearance, the reviews, the snippets, all that other stuff that comes up. And that's why it takes really cool tools. And I'm working with a new AI tool to take and export all this data and try to make sense of it so that I can tell a bigger story. But for today, we're going to talk about transmission in the terms of content I've created and content I should create. And how would I talk about it? So we've got this concept, uh, concept of transmissions. Um, obviously, if you look through all, what, 994 of these words, uh, there's a variety of different uh, concepts coming to the page today, and I start looking for outliers of those content. Um, I'm looking for things I did not already uh, optimize for or things I did optimize. I'm trying to separate the two. Uh, so what I ended up coming up with is that at the top scale, 100%, the biggest bulk terms are either going to be about purchasing or servicing. So if you want to purchase a transmission, I'm not saying it's the same search volume as servicing. Um, I'm telling you that at the top of these flows, they are the most generic version of the word. So you've got transmission, purchase, or service. After that, the next big thing is you've got a service cost. How much is it going to cost me? And how much um, am I going to you know, buy new or used? So it's kind of interesting to me that they flip a little bit um, in terms of looking for money and value. Then you're going to go down the way and you're going to say, great, now we're on the transmission side. i got another topic. It's really popular about recurring. How often should I do it? Uh, and then on the other side, I got brands and make, but not, not as much as people care just about new or used. Um, lastly, whether it's manual or auto and then the make and model. So I've got now a pretty solid list and a very easy to understand sort of level for people um, of, you know, kind of most volume, most variety of keywords down to lowest volumes and lowest variety of keywords. Um, and I go through and I start saying, hey, we've done all the work here. We've, uh, I would probably start writing out all the individual projects we've done to get to these two keywords and we're doing great. Here's the rank, here's the improvement, but we could do better. We could do better on service and purchasing. We could do better, um, especially in purchasing because we really haven't targeted any of these other words. And what's really interesting is if you're working in a smaller business and you let your SEO run without, you know, kind of monitoring them or checking in on them a lot, you might end up with a whole bunch of purchasing content that you didn't want because you don't do transmission purchasing, which is sort of what we found out here uh, when we went and said, hey, are we interested in talking about purchasing? And they're like, no, not at all. We don't buy parts. We don't deal with parts. Um, if we buy cars, we buy the whole car and we'll, we'll scrap it ourselves and all that, but we don't buy the parts. And I was like, great, awesome, perfect. Cut it from our list and moved on to something else. So now I know that I need to write content. I need to create new broad content about servicing. There's got to be more questions that I haven't answered in these 994. Um, I've got to start talking about my models and maybe deals and discounts. I've got to just keep fresh on that content, driving to my local listings, driving to my uh, posting them on my local listings, even on my Google My Business, in order to keep that relevancy around this topic, just how I'll focus my team and continue to report on this topic when I talk about it. So. You're going to write high quality content in a quick summary. You're going to use concise headlines. You're not going to make everything an H1. You're not going to make everything a headline. You're going to separate headlines and body content and use them judiciously throughout the page. You're going to use those headlines because you're going to break up blocks of text. You don't want to write more than 300 words uh, per block of text. 
Um, you're going to want to cite sources. I don't know who started this, but I've heard very recently that people are using superscript numbers again to cite sources on the internet. Don't do that. Um, cite your source on the keyword. That keyword is called anchor text. So you find the text in the page that is, you know, like according to 95% of Americans, well, according to 95, that's, that's all your anchor and use that to link over to whatever you're talking about. And the internet can go, or the search bot can go as it's crawling your site. Oh, okay. This is a citation and it's linking over to a site that cited it. Perfect. Wonderful. Move on. Don't use numbers. It means nothing to nobody. And honestly, they're hard to click, especially if you'd be on mobile. Um, you can also use nofollow on links you cite. You don't always have to use a follow link. Um, I don't really want to get into nofollows and the technicals of what you can do on links. Uh, but if you do use a nofollow, the only place I would suggest using it is on external sites. Um, and then finally, you're going to write in your brand voice. I'm going to write content as Lauren and Bird Dog SEO. I'm not going to write content um, unless you ask me to as your business. So do make sure that if you do hire someone to write for you, that if you have a brand content guide or anything of that nature, that you actually share that with them, or at least you, you review whatever they send you for that. Make sure it sounds like you don't sound like an AI bot. Um, and lastly, don't forget, content isn't just words. Uh, make sure that you're incorporating visuals and graphics. You can start with words. Words are pretty easy. Um, and if it's working and you're getting traffic, maybe go to like a Fiverr and pay, and pay somebody to turn it into a visual. Maybe you can make an infographic out of something. That's what they're there for. AI tools, again, you can probably find something that will take your AI data and turn, turn it into graphs and pictures. Um, make it useful. Use captions, use sites. Um, if you do uh, make video, YouTube, I think, will auto caption it. So there's more content for you. So boom, all of this stuff you're creating builds on itself. And it's really important that you go forth with what you've got, build that uh, research, know your audience, build their content out for that, and then keep going. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you've set up your site, you've started your research, you're writing your pages. Now you want to know how it's doing. Um, SEO is slow. Uh, I don't know if anybody has explained or you've talked to anybody about it before or if you've heard, but I think um, we say eight to 12 weeks is typically, you know, the generic number in the SEO world. Things take time. This is not paid search. This is not social media. If you start writing today, your very first blog post, I would not expect to see exciting traffic on it until eight to 10 weeks from now. Um, I would expect to see some, but nothing excitingly from a story to tell you. So let's talk about the plugins and stuff that'll help you get there. Content writing plugins. I love these. I've talked about AI a lot in here. I think AI is here. I don't know why I'm even bringing it up. It is here. Um, and AI is going to help content writing throughout, throughout all of Google's search results. Problem is, is that you can't just go to an AI tool like some of these, even AI Genia here is really great. I don't use it. Um, you can't just say, hey, write me something, publish it, and expect it to rank, especially if you have a brand new site. If you have a bigger site, if you're an enterprise company, you can probably get away with it for a little bit of time. But for the most part, uh, when you have a brand new site, brand new content, you really need that opinion, that uh, point of view, that unique thing that you're bringing to bring it to the point where someone's going to index it. Um, so what I like to use are content plugins, especially if you're running with Yoast or something like that. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. I like those because they help you as you go along. Um, I like using AI to get me started, to build outlines, to organize. I love it for copy editing. Um, I'm not the best grammatical person. So I like to have those sorts of tools come back and double check all the work that I do. And that's how I use AI. But I think there's a lot of content plugins you can go after and use. Um, but again, I bet a lot of people here do have or want to know more about how you do this with Yoast. Um, so Yoast is uh, a really, really great tool, and it's got these two components to it called the SEO analysis and uh, the readability analysis. Um, the SEO analysis, these are both represented in stoplight scores. I'll show them in a second. Uh, but the SEO analysis is where you get uh, the basic like top 15 best practices from SEO. Uh, it goes through and double checks it. Again, it's a bot. You have to use your brain with any of the tools you, you in install on your site. But from this perspective, uh, it really does help quicken things up. So in this case, I'm highlighting, they, they tell me I don't have enough keyword density. Um, here's my keyword, uh, that target keyword I put into the system. Um, it's telling me I'm not using it enough, and now I've got to go find it. Uh, and I've got to go through and read and understand. And I have to remember link building strategies is not exactly the only way you say that. Maybe it's a strategy for link building. Maybe it's a link building strategy. Yoast is going to see that separately as different words. I'm going to see them all as the same. So again, you just have to just have to use some some mental work on that one to make sure it's there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's readability. 
same story on readability. Uh, you've got, uh, again, the highlighting tool, and it looks at a bunch of different stuff. It's really nice, I think, for helping you like, rephrase content, make it more engaging, move from a, pa I, I apparently tend to run in a very passive tense, helps me bring it to the, the current tense. It's really nice stuff. But at the same time, it's here telling me that I've got four sentences started with the same letter. Well, this is a template email that I wrote uh, for people to use for link building outreach, and I want them to put their name, their position, their company, and their contact information. So again, use your brain, you know, like Yoast, oh, that's annoying, but okay, all right, I get it. Um, so I think I missed, oh, I missed a slide, I'm so sorry. Um, Yoast SEO scores, I wanted to talk about that. So you'll see them here in the, the right corner. Um, you can't always have a green score. Uh, so we were just talking about those 15 SEO points and the extra uh, readability points, um, but they're all gonna be represented here in different scores. Um, so orange is fine, orange means okay. Uh, green is good, and it's very difficult to get to. As you can see, that we just talked about, there's some arbitrary random stuff in there. Um, and then nice to know, blue is not indexed, <clears throat> which is a whole different concept. Um, using Yoast tools, you can block pages. So maybe you make a custom landing page for a promotional offer. You don't want everybody to know about it. You only want those email customers to know about it. You would use your Yoast tools to block it, and then you could quickly identify it here as it being um, a blocked page. <clears throat> So let me skip through the part that I already did. Um, you've got your SEO content with Yoast. You've, you've optimized what you can. You're going back through and looking at things, building links to content. Um, and now you want to keep uh, knowing how good you're doing and how much better should you do. Um, so when it's different to me with the SEO tools that come with plugins like Yoast and, and, and AIO, they come with their own data points. A lot of tools come with their own data points. Um, but they're telling you about like from organic to your site, or they're telling you about what is in going on in the organic results. What I like about these and with the difference I make is that analytics plugins are going to tell you about what's going on on your site. So an analytics plugin, you know, the very common ones across top here, a site kit, monster, monster insights. Uh, these are great. You should use these if you don't have anything else. If you have specific ones you like better, if you use what, uh, something else, that's fine too. Um, I'm going to talk about site kit in a, in a second, but these are the two biggest ones because monster insights was one of the first to come out to get Google data from analytics because that was one of the most you know difficult things. Um, you can see a lot of these focus on Google Analytics. And then recently Google came out with their own result and I'm really interested to see what happens with the rest of these because SiteKit is pretty great. So here it is, SiteKit is the way to get Google data on a dashboard into uh, WordPress. Um, I think it's super useful if you connect uh, analytics and search console and ads, you can get all that information together in a quick snapshot and see it. <laughs> it's kind of it's really nice. You get a quick link out to what you're looking for. You can get into the platform super fast and it's all based on the same stuff. So way uh, a few slides ago, we were talking about transmissions and I was showing you the search console data. I can now see that by page here from an analytics perspective. I can see the page views and sessions and all the other data um, that comes with that in terms of conversions and, and things like that. Um, and then I can quickly get from there into my analytics package to start seeing other things. Um, and then there's other reports in here, especially around uh, speed and traffic that'll take you right into Search Console. Um, so Search Console is a great, great tool. I know I talked about it from a performance perspective, but you can see there are these other categories of information in Search Console. Uh, they'll tell you about the indexing, how fast, how many pages, how fast are they loading? How are they loading for mobile versus desktop? Um, what are your problem areas? How do you fix that problem area? Google Search Console comes with a lot of data to help webmasters. And I honestly think if you're not, if you haven't installed SiteKit and you don't have any of these other things, it makes it super easy to do it all together. If you already have Search Console and analytics or anything and you want to add SiteKit, it's also super easy. Um, but either way, the quick answer is it's super easy. And if you haven't installed it, please do. You can also, like I said, install other ones. It doesn't have to be SiteKit. You can go with the Monster Insights. You can go with whatever uh, Yoast gives you. Um, you can also use outside tools like SEMrush. It comes with really great uh, organic reporting. It also connects to my Google Analytics. So it's a lot of good stuff there. Um, and then finally, you don't have to use that major SEO plugin. If you don't want to, you can always install just specific analytics. You can always use, I think Adobe has an, uh, a plugin now, um, but if you, if you want to go look, um, go look. But if you, again, if you don't have anything else and you're like, Lauren, I don't have time for anything else. I don't want to pay for anything. Go with Google Search Console. It's at least your best bet to understand what's going on. So all in all, this is a reminder that it doesn't really matter who you are or what your business is doing or how big your business is. You absolutely can get somewhere with SEO with these basic steps. If you start with this, your, your base, your foundation is set solid. 
and you can start building more content on and on. We can, I'm happy to talk with you about content creation um, and, and scalable things and how to move quickly, um, but not today. Uh, I want to talk to just solely to wrap up that, you know, architecture is critical. If you bloat your site, if you add too many pages to that index, the crawl has to spend all that time to get them there. And you've got very confusing information in the index to end up in the search results. If you're not using all these extra things about sitemaps that come with your uh, SEO tools, your schema types that come with these SEO tools, um, if you're not using them, you need to find someone to help you use them or you need to like go learn because you're paying or you've got these tools installed on your site, they're taking up space, use them. Um, and that's the number one thing I wanna pass on is that SEO can help everybody, but you have to use it and you have to do it every day. Um, and I believe that's it. That was a super fun and long <laughs> 40 minutes, but I appreciate everybody sticking through. Um, Melissa, I think maybe there were some questions and um, absolutely, I appreciate everybody coming and let me talk for 40. So please let me review your site. Let's talk about it. Sign up for some time. I'm happy to do that. Uh, quick 30 minutes. Let's talk about, maybe I can help or maybe I can just help you move on. I'm here to help. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. I was listening in the background as I was finishing my breakfast. Um, I want to encourage people to take a screenshot if you want to be able to uh, find Lauren later and follow her on the place on all the places. Take a screenshot here before I remove it from the screen in three, two, one. All right, let's chat. So we do have some questions and let's see, I'm gonna make sure I, I go over them. So the first question we have for you is, does the HTML to text ratio in uh, matter anymore in SEO? Yes, great question. Oh, that's an advanced one. Yes, um, the HTML to text ratio is talking about the amount of code on your page versus the amount of like readable text by a user. Um, if you have, uh, I have had clients with heavy, heavy code, minimal text. Um, and yes, it has bad rankings. And we just went through and started scraping out code as much as we could go, you know, WordPress has a lot of extra code on different pages. So we started scraping that out and that was great. And we saw a little kind of bump, but then we started adding more words because that seemed to be the other benefit. And um, so, yes, I absolutely think it does, um, does matter. And the easiest answer I would tell you to get out of that situation is to add more text, not always try to remove the HTML. Fantastic. Uh, the next question is, I think, very much a personal decision when it comes to looking at what plugins to use. But they are asking Rank Math versus Squirrel SEO versus SEO Press versus Yoast. Um, other people have put others in the chat that they yeah. use as well. So um, I don't know if you want to actually endorse a particular one or if you have um, any ideas of how people should choose. I, I'm not affiliated. I don't get paid by anybody. Um, I do, I do like Yoast to, to some extent. Um, it's so popular. They've spent, uh, I've been around forever. Um, and they spend a lot of time building education. So if you want to learn how to do the SEO you're doing, I do recommend Yoast for that. Um, I've been looking into rank math because it's new to me and I, I looked in and they've got some really cool stuff going on that kind of combines from content creation and really focus on that versus like the keyword targeting and the link. And so there's a lot of differences. And I think you're absolutely right that you got to go look at them. Um, and the number one thing and number one thing I still know today and my can thank my mother for this one is you got to look at uh, how often is it updated? When was it last updated? Who's keeping And so those are almost as important as the amount of information and stuff you can get from the, the plugin as well. Absolutely. Another question. Is it okay to still use H tags for actual headings? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry if I made that sound un. Yeah, 100%. Please use headings, but make sure you have one H1 and a handful of H2s and some more H3s. Um, yeah. You just don't want to have everything be a heading and everything not be a heading. Absolutely. Um, and Five Figure Lifestyle wants to know if you're going to make your slide deck available later. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, if we can so, do that for you guys and Amplify, I will. If not, I'll put perfect. it on the screen yeah. and share it with you. Yeah. Yep. No, we're happy to share it out for you. Not a problem perfect. at all. Um, and so Peter Ingersoll brings us a, a, a comment that document formatting and proper use of headings is important for accessibility. So posts written with accessibility in mind um, should ha also have improved SEO, assuming yeah. the content is valuable. I'm not sure if that was a question, but I totally agree with the it's statement. It's not. I just thought it was a good a good comment to bring up as well. I love it. Yeah, no, I love it because um, uh, I've worked with a handful of accessibility. I used to focus quite a bit in the hospitality world on website accessibility. 
And um, it was fundamentally the good SEO is good accessibility. They are kind of the same thing. They have a huge Venn diagram of an overlap. Um, and I do agree completely that you should focus on both when you're doing SEO. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you have an answer to this one and I'm not a cadence expert. I am filling in today. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, does cadence have a best practice for plugins constantly running into the site, slowing down because of plugins? I'm frequently told to add them. So it is very confusing. Um, I don't know if you have it. I mean, I have a little bit of a solution, but I don't know if you have anything you want to add there. Um, I don't think I have enough information to add anything okay. to that. I don't know what plugins you have. You could email me um, or set up a call and I'd be happy to talk with you through it. But uh, without knowing exactly what's going on, I'm not sure I have a good answer. Absolutely. And especially when it comes to SEO in general, though, use the plugins you need and figure out, you know, what you can do to, to slim them down. Um, but, but, you know, uh, set up an appointment with Lauren, if you want to look at those in particular. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then Peter Ingersoll says, I see AI is not only helping with content creation, but it will continue to evolve SEO content as practices. Is there a better and better machine understanding of content? Do you have thoughts on that? I, I think, I think if I understand what's kind of being asked here is that uh, the SEO content best practices used, used to be when I first started 10, 15 years ago, they used to be put a keyword here, change the keyword here, do this with this keyword, stuff your keywords. And then we kind of learned that, okay, the, you know, keywords and topics are kind of similar and Google learned that. And so I think this question is asking, is there an evolution beyond that? And I think um, I would love to come back and talk about the knowledge graph and how Google is, has made sense of things and is starting to like semantically put things together because I think that is a huge bit of this. I think AI and voice and AR, and AR actually all go together quite a bit because we can honestly um, start to understand the concept of something and then move on from that and start talking about the solution of that. And I think we'd be in a really cool machine focused world at that point and it freaks me off, but I'd love to talk about it. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. Um, ben Anderson is asking if, if you not necessarily do another talk right this minute, but are you able to help with SEO in languages other than English? I, I think there's some things I could help with. I speak uh, conversational Spanish. I don't want to say that I was enough, uh, good enough to, to do full SEO keyword research in that, but I think there's some fundamentals that are the same, no matter what language you're working in. And I can work at that. But if you're asking me for like, you know, Korean, oh, I, I'm, I'm not good at that, no. <laughs> I completely understand. And then our last question is, for SEO, does it help if we include an audio version of our blog, blog post Ooh. using Voice Generator? That's a good <laughs> question for me. Yeah, that's a really good question. I've never really thought about it in the flip terms like that. Yeah. Um, so I would first say maybe uh, it would depend on that audio uh, because I would not, you know, first off, let's, it depends on how long the content is. If it's a podcast, that's like an hour long. I would not want to listen to Siri talk to me in a pod, about a podcast. I would lose <laughs> all of your inflections, all of your, your, your sure. voice. But if it's like a quick tip video of how to do 100%, that makes total sense to me. Totally yeah, put it yeah. in there. Because again, I think the question earlier about accessibility, you may have people who can't read. So maybe they need to hear it and you want that same thing there. So it depends. But yeah, I think it could be done. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, let's see if we have any other. Uh, ben Anderson says, like in Swedish, for example, do you speak Swedish? Ah, I, I would love Swedish. to speak Swedish. If you want to bring me to Sweden so I can like, do a multi <laughs> I will help you with your, your Swedish site. So, yeah, Ben, I guess the answer is maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for, um, for being here today. I want to uh, let people know that we'll be back at the top of the hour with Maestro Stevens, looking forward to his talk and introducing him as well. Um, if you are interested in getting on the Cadence mailing list, you can go to cadencewp.com slash newsletter dash subscribe. Also follow us on, I'm still going to call it Twitter. I'm always going to call it Twitter, <laughs> Lauren. Follow us at, at, at cadencewp and we're also at cadencewp on the gram. So we will see everybody back at the top of the hour. Lauren, thank you again for sharing with us today. And uh, look for, I, I want to connect with you afterwards. So I'm going to follow you, follow up with you on LinkedIn and uh, hope everybody else does too. Have a great Perfect. rest of your day. We'll see you everybody too. else soon. Thanks.